The picturesque market town of Stafford is not the place you would associate with gang activity. But thanks to COVID, vulnerable young people in quiet corners like this are falling into the hands of the county line's drug trade. During lockdown, I didn't want to be at home. I was always arguing and fighting with my parents. I went out all the time to avoid them. I was bored and lonely. We can't tell you Alicia's real name as it would put her at risk and her words have been revoiced. But she's just 14 years old and struggled with her mental health during lockdown. When an 18-year-old boy messaged her on Snapchat, she thought it could be the start of an exciting new relationship. I met him on Snapchat. He added me and we just started talking. He persuaded me to meet him, so I did, and he seemed really nice. But things quickly changed. Alicia was in the clutches of a county lines gang, forced to run drugs, carry weapons and have sex. Whenever we'd meet up, we'd smoke weed together. He always had some. He owed money to his dealer and I owed money to him. He said I could pay it back by working for him. I got offered free phones and free weed and other stuff as well as that. I said I wouldn't do it anymore once I'd paid it back, but then I got offered more free weed, so I just carried on. I'd seen other people get beaten up or threatened or have their houses smashed if they said no, so I couldn't. It got worse pretty quickly. He'd get people to sit outside my house to keep tabs on me. Unless it sends, you must wear a face covering. He told me that if I was out when I wasn't supposed to be, he'd put our windows through. I was never given any tickets, I was just told to jump the trains. I went locally at first, then to other cities. I'd carry the weed and sometimes coke in a bag. My boyfriend got me working for another guy who asked if I wanted to make some money by packing weapons. He was higher up than the other dealers, so I felt protected. I just did the drops, jump in the trains again. I was made to have sex with some of the guys. I was worried about what would happen if I said no, because I saw others get assaulted for not doing stuff. But it got to a point where I knew I was in this really deep. I realised I needed help. I didn't want to be involved in the gang, but was worried about what would happen if I said no. I knew it couldn't carry on. A report by the National Youth Agency shared exclusively with Sophie Ridge on Sunday says that young people like Alicia are at risk of exploitation from county lines gangs more than ever. The report also says the typical victim is changing, more affluent, more female. Many youth workers have also reported victims getting younger. I think we need much greater public awareness of what's going on. Sarah Parker works for the local youth charity who are now helping Alicia adjust to a new life. The impact is absolutely devastating. And I think she says there are many more stories uh, like Alicia's. We have seen social media being used very widely to groom children. Primarily, that's, that's why. Because children have spent all that time online and, and have been encouraged to. Education's gone online. You know, their parents have, have known that that kind of keeps them occupied. It stops them from getting bored. It means that they can remain in contact with their friends, but it also means they can be in contact with, with other people. But we've also seen social media... Um, being used to advertise job opportunities for children to make quick money. Um, so actually some of the kind of the roles in county lines exploitation have been advertised. I mean, take the example of Alicia. She is in no way um, what you would consider to be a traditional victim of county lines exploitation. She's a girl to start with. Um, she comes from uh, a, a settled, loving and economically stable home. Um, and, and yet she's been drawn into this, this terrible situation that's had a huge impact both on her and on her family. Um, so, yeah, I think we're seeing there's kind of been a, a much wider range of children have been targeted and drawn in. Youth workers and charities across the country have told Sky News they've seen more girls in particular being exploited by county lines gangs during the pandemic. Now politicians, like the chair of the parliamentary group on knife crime, are also worried. If you're talking about girls caught up in county lines, they're not part of a gang, they are victims of gangs. And unless we look at it from a gendered approach, we won't address this issue. And one of the key things that we also need to look at is the data. We're still, we're still unclear about how many young women and girls are caught up in this activity. 
The police may say they've had a great year in, in terms of arrest, but it's not a great year when, at the end of this, you're seeing women and girls still being exploited. You're seeing women and girls being violently raped by gang members. You're seeing women and girls probably stashing some of these drugs and weapons in their properties, endangering other family members. So that's not a great success. Lennox Rogers, a former gang member himself, now works with young people who need help turning away from life in a gang. His phone hasn't stopped ringing during lockdown. We talked to a lot of people. We needed to get out there and help young people and the families address these issues. There were some young people that we worked with um, who were working. Their shifts got reduced in COVID, and so it had an impact on their finances. And, and they had some friends, some of whom were negative influences, and they were introduced to drugs, you know, and they were showing them, oh, you know, you could have this, you could have that. And it was very tempting. COVID, um, you, you know, it increased their business um, because um, people were struggling to cope with mental health issues and uh, they used drugs to cope with escapism. And, um, you know, uh, I noticed quite a few young people that, um, we're new to it. Thousands of children are exploited by County Lines gangs across the UK each year. Luckily for Alicia, she got help, but the road to recovery is a long one. I'm finally getting some help. I'm listening to people. I'm trying to get my life back, but it's really hard. 